Greetings and salutations all you folks out there. I've got a game for you today on Selkie Isle. It's the map that all the cool kids are playing right now and I gotta tell you it is a great map. I've played maybe a dozen games on it by now. It is starting to develop its own beta game and some of the play that's taking place on it is pretty dang cool. So I would encourage you to maybe pick up a replay from the client on it and maybe jump in a game yourself, download it. It's called Selkie Isle. You can see the name right up there in the top right and it offers a pretty good time. So we're going to take a look at this game. It is between 1,000 and 1,700 ranking with very well-balanced teams and slots. Let's go ahead and introduce everybody, and then we'll jump straight into the action. On the northern team, we have I Am Cupcakes. He's taking Aeon in the brilliant blue color, and Mr. Zion is taking Aeon as well, but kicking for the purple at the moment. Aeon for Swiss Cow, who is rockin' gray, and then Seraphim for Alignagi Babakirage. Yeah, we're going to call him Alig. Um, <laughs> he is in the orange. I'm not sure if this was random factions. I'm tempted to say that it was, but whatever the case may be, there is a whole lot of Aeon on the North team. Another Aeon for Leo in the South Side. He is taking the brilliant red, crimson, scarlet, whatever you want to call it. Lemodka Fox, with horrible spelling, is taking green Aeon. Then we've got Cybran for Teague in the royal blue, and... Seraphim for Castigo, who is taking the lovely teal shade. All right, that's going to wrap up our introductions, and you can see how everybody's early build is going. We got land factories down for most everyone, couple P gens, early hydro for most people. Um, yeah, you will be able to see how this game turns out. There is also a five versus five version of this map, which has a player right here, and it does play pretty similarly to this game. Um, but there are some little differences. There's a land battle that goes on in the middle, which in my experience is not too important. And I have this on good authority from people who play it a lot that the center is actually not the most critical thing the Navy is. But having said that, if you let all of these mass extractors go to the other team, you're probably going to have a bad time later if you lose the Navy in the early game. So while these guys are winding up, because this is a fairly large map, let's go ahead and take a look at Reclaim, and then i got a couple of things to tell you guys about the channel. Um, we have a frigate out here for Reclaim, and then three frigates on this shore. And you may say, well, why are there three frigates for the south side? That's not entirely true, because the distance from here to here is roughly the same distance as from here to here. And you will see, well, I thought there was. Maybe the engineer already grabbed it. I thought there was a naval wreck somewhere over there. Apparently not. I am sadly mistaken. Anyway, either faction, either side on this is going to have about the same chances of getting either an engineer or the ACU or a drone, depending on what your faction choice may be to these frigates. Um, this is also a prime location for a drop from this side, and then if you have hover units all aboard the landing zone, um, you can pour some units in here for a little bit of land engagement in the early game. Uh, as far as mechs distribution goes, we have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 13, and then 3, 6, 9, and 13 for the south side. So if you include the island on this side, these guys have an even number of mass extractors. All right, looks like we have an early drop coming out. This is going to be for the Swiss cow. He's going to drop right here and snag those wrecks. Excellent play. So there's three frigates on each side over here as well. Those look like UEF frigates, if I'm not totally mistaken. Probably are. And it looks like we're going to have a drop coming in from Teague to secure this beachhead right here. Okay, as far as announcements go, I have some really cool news. Maybe not so cool to you, but I thought it was kind of exciting. In approximately three days, two days from the release of this cast, my contract is up with my current network, which it has a couple of cool things. Number one, I will be able to turn off all ads on my channel. I think sidebar ads and all banner video ads, etc., etc. I know a lot of you guys use ad blocker anyway, so you don't particularly care about that. But uh, yeah, it will be going away. Um, also, I will be able to actually do collaborations. I know I haven't really actively pursued collaborations, and in large part that is because under my current contract, I'm technically not supposed to collaborate with anyone that's not in the network. And there's no one in my network who does subcom. So... 
next week or in the weeks following, if any of the guys who cast Supcom are watching this, if you want to do collaborations, I would be more than happy to maybe do a cast with you. So just let me know on that. Um, paired with that, because ad revenue is going away, which, of course, there's not a whole lot of ad revenue from a channel that is this low in... Uh, this low on the chain for YouTube channels. Um, if you feel so inclined, if you are maybe turning off ad blocker or to help out a little bit or, you know, whatever your feelings may be, I do have the Patreon link still in the bottom. If you get a lot of enjoyment out of the channel and you wish to kick back some of that, even a dollar helps out. Like I said, I use the money from Patreon to help pay internet bills and power bills, that kind of thing. Um, so, I'm not going to die if I don't get it, but if I do, it is a huge help. So that is down there. All right. Looks like we have our first land engagement coming up. We got four land factories down for Teague. He has gone super duper aggressive on this beachhead, and he is going to be pushing towards the two lonely factories and a couple of engineers possessed by Swiss Cow. I think he will be winning this unless Swiss Cow manages to get a point defense down very quickly and some aggressive factory building. He does have a couple up here, but with the reclaim time on it, I don't think he's going to be successful. As far as Navy Rush goes, we have a single frigate out from Swiss Cow. Uh, but I don't think that's going to really contend very well with Castigo and his two factories. It looks like he is going ahead and dropping a slow T2 upgrade. Hopefully he's upgrading his eco as well in the back here. Looks like we have a couple of T2 mass extractors online and working on another. So he's getting his eco up to par and then jumping in for T2 Navy. Which is a very, very good choice on a map like this. With Seraphim, maybe not so much. But basically, the entire map is within reach of either Cybern Aeon Destroyer Fire or UEF Seraphim Cruiser Fire. Now, on this island, we have a little bit of an interesting play here. Alec is going for an Engineer drop on this island, and it looks like he will actually be successful. Um, he is going to lay down a land factory, which will let him build units to discourage any further incursion from this side. Castigo is taking appropriate measures and sending his ACU directly into the fray because there is absolutely no way that enough units will come online in time to save that factory. Now, I think that was scouted because, as you can see, the factory was reclaimed and he's just going to do as much damage as he can until the ACU gets there which I think is a pretty good logical choice. Mantis Swarm has overtaken Swiss Cow's factories. This is going to pretty much secure this end of the island for the southern team. Teague is doing very, very nicely at that, but it looks like Zion has got the gun upgrade and he is moving south. He is going to try to secure this island from his end. He does have a Tichi factory online on this side. It means he's going to be able to build mobile shields, mobile flak, all kinds of useful things out of that. Along with that Tichi engineer that's kind of hanging out right there. And we do have another faction on the island as well. Looks like Leo has dropped on this area to claim these two mass extractors. I spy unreclaimed frigate wrecks. That is a bad thing. Always want to snag those guys for the extra mass that they provide in such a beautiful manner. On this side, you notice there is a entrance. Let's see. And right here. Um, to these sides around this edge and then, of course, along the entire beach right here. This one is walled off, so that's going to help slow down anything coming from that direction. And he does have frigates in the water. That should be able to deny hover. But that is an avenue of access. So if you're playing this, don't forget about that little thing right there. Otherwise, you might have hover tanks in your lap in short order. I have had that happen to me on at least one occasion. We've got point defense going down. There is a glorious field of T2 reclaim in here. But there's four T1 point defense guarding it. So you kind of have to take those out before you try to snag it. It is not the end of the world if you don't get it. But anytime you can get your hands on tasty, tasty reclaim... Is a good thing to do so engineers should be following up shortly if these guys are doing anything like they should should be getting engineers up there and that will provide a very pleasant mass boost in this land war and it looks like we are engaging in a vicious land war eight nine land factories down in the center and that is going to be pushing land units as fast as they can possibly go for teague 
Lots of T1 bomber harassment on this side. This is very, very nice to see coming from a 1000 rated player. I do not mean that in a derogatory manner, but it's always good to see someone at that level using play like this. It means that they're going to be going up, and up is a good thing. Lots of... Let's see. He must be getting aggressive upgrades on something. Not that I see. What is he doing? He's got T2 power. I may have to take back what I said. It looks like he's focusing on getting T2 online on the island. He's building TAC missile defense. Prioritization is kind of weird. We'll just have to see what he does with it. T1 bomber harassment coming in from Zion now. He is providing his own T1 air cover, which is very, very nice to see. We've got transports moving things in from... Actually, no, those are just traveling over from the air factory. Cool Beans that will be able to get his units to the front line faster. And he's about to start shredding out these Mantis with his gun upgraded commander. He does have blazes to back him up. So I think he will be, will very easily wipe out this middle force here. And that should allow him to start making a dent in the south side. But you can see low unit count high unit count and that means units are going to be leaking all around the edges that is when bad things happen to you many many naval factories going down for alec looks like he's going to be kicking the frigate spam into high gear momentarily but there's already a destroyer on the field for castigo which might screw things up quite a bit um, Destroyer, especially a Seraphim Destroyer, is going to outmatch any T1 Navy that can be thrown at it, both subs and frigates. You can submerge to kill the frigates, and the Torps outdo T1 subs very easily. So I think that's going to force a T2 move by Alec. Looks like we've already got T2 coming online for Swiss Cow as well. I am not entirely sure. I think this is technically supposed to be air support. I believe that's the way I have always seen it played. Um, so, yeah, we should be seeing T3 Air at some point. It looks like Modka Fox is doing that. He's got the traditional resource allocation build going on here. He's already got first RAS. Almost looks like a Settens build. And to be completely honest, this almost looks like a Settens texture pack. So, maybe we're seeing the beginning of Settens 2.0, depending on how strict the meta becomes in this game over the course of the next months. T2 Engineer building a very, very sneaky uh, attack missile launcher. I approve. Sneakiness is always good. We've got Obsidian Heavy Tanks moving out in the middle. That is going to be a very good powerhouse option to deal with these blazes. Blazes... Well, actually, this goes for any amphibious tanks. Typically speaking, the amphibious tanks... Oh, the carnage! That flak tearing into these interceptors, killing off many, many Inties before they finally get the clue that they need to move, get out. As I was saying, the assault tanks will almost always die to the main land tanks of the same faction. Um, in some cases, the micro can help you out just a little bit, and I like the speed on the assault tanks, but assault tanks are meant to be fast and to... Uh, either hover over the water or go under the water and you trade those abilities for your DPS and health options. Zion doing very well mopping up these groups of mantis. It looks like we do have T2 Cybran on the island. That's going to be pushing flak and hoplites. And finally, we have made it to the build power. I don't know how much damage they're going to actually be able to do to the build power, but they have arrived and that's going to start putting a little bit of a damper on the party for Zion. Say that time ten times fast. Make you feel like an auctioneer at some points. That is a pretty little chunk of mass over there, too. That looks like a T2 unit. Not sure what that is all about. I don't think I saw a T2 unit die there, but that is kind of interesting. And that is Attack Pack Commander. Brilliant pickup there. He is actually moving towards the outside edge to land tax on these mass extractors, but he is going to get pushed back a little bit by the oncoming destroyer that was over in this area. However, he is going to keep pushing northward. He tacked the farthest mechs first so that he could continue walking and launch tacks later. That is brilliant play right there. And here comes a first strap bomber of the game. This is going to be hard hitting. 
T2 mass extractors going down left and right. We do have a couple of swift winds moving in. Swift winds are fast, but not fast enough on a map this big. We're going to lose several mass extractors on the north side before those swift winds are going to be able to intercept. Looks like a total of four, possibly, <clears throat> possibly five, depending on how well these swift winds come in. Here comes the damage and not quite on that bomb. All right, good dealio. Only four mass extractors, three, four mass extractors, yes. So a bit of damage to eco, but nothing lethal. And here comes a drop. This is going to be a beautiful thing if it actually lands. Let's see. We have ASF, though. I don't think it's going to connect because I believe we have radar coverage. They're going to try to drop right here. Looks like all those are going to get mopped up, though. Well, no. The ASF are actually on a move order, just getting generally in that direction. Does Modka Fox? There's Intel. And he's pulling the ASF back. Critical error. Don't do that. We actually had an ASF fly over a transport, pulling back into base, and it didn't kill it. Holy kishmolis. And a single T2 gunship doing its dirty work. Oh, my. Well, I missed that. <laughs> I'm going to have to catch that on the replay cam. It is already playing down there, for those of you who are listening to me ramble on about something that I totally missed. My speculation would be, though, that the T2 units clumped up on it with the help of some T1 and killed off that ACU pretty dang easily. As I was saying, the Aeon Navy does not have anti-air unless you build one of the dedicated anti-air units, and that can be hard. Um, so a single gunship is actually a danger to this kind of thing. But there's the cruiser, there's the interceptors, gunship's going to go down, and we have two glorious little blazes. Hanging out, doing absolutely nothing when they should be up here killing off mass extractors. Not sure what's going on there, but apparently those units got forgotten about. Now down here, Alec has done an exceptionally fine job of overcoming a T2 Navy with a T1 Navy. He has now pushed T2, which is going to help him out tremendously, but he was able to get down into the build power of Castigo, and that is pretty much GG. When you start losing your build power, and you have T2 Navy descending upon you, you have lost. I hate to say it, but you just have. And that is a cheeky bastard of an engineer. Building a point defense and a radar on the edge to prevent incursion from these units and take out those two mass extractors. And then that engineer was trying to build a land factory, but the land factory was placed just a little bit too far in for the engineer to edge build. ACU is going to have to get out of the water there. Lots of T1 torp launchers going down, which is a good option versus the T1 Navy, a bad option versus the T2 Navy. And once that T2 Navy gets in there, it's just going to zap all those things off, and then that will be that. Um, interesting thing that I noticed a couple of months back, um, or actually I read something about it that clued me in, I had not thought about before, and that is the fact that the cruisers that shoot TAC missiles belong to the factions with the short-range destroyers because T2 torpedo defense hard counters UEF and Seraphim destroyers because they have to come within range of the torps to fire on them. However, UEF and Seraphim both have long-range cruisers, which let them bombard the T2 point defense from out of reach. T1 point defense, you're just out of luck either way, and this is a brutal strap bombing going on swiss cow well at least he has ras that means that this power hit is not a total loss but it is going to slow down his resource allocation two t3 bombers are a tough issue to deal with in any game and at this point they're just shredding since there's no opposing asf cruisers need to come online asap over here this is a very interesting dynamic because we have a tremendous naval win for the North team. We have an absolute squashing of Castigo by Alec. And then on the left side, we have Leo falling over to I Am Cupcakes, which is just an awesome name all the way around. Um, so Navy is in the hands of the North team by a long shot. And air is in the hands of the South team by a huge margin. 
So basically we're going to be seeing whether Navy truly overcomes air in this map like it does on Sentence. And we're going to see if the air player can manage to snipe off enough things to make up the difference in this game. So we've got destroyers moving in, not quite able to shoot this mass extractor because, hey, there's a hill there. We need a cruiser for that. ASF pulling back into base and a cruiser moving over Castigo's area. Typically, I would say hold your cruisers back, but when the air threat is this high, you definitely want to get that cruiser in there to provide close coverage and also make use of the tack launcher. Now this is where you just need to bum rush that Salem with your frigates. If you do, you're going to beat it easily and then you can move on to trample the build power in this naval base. This is actually looking very, very bad for the southern team. At first I was thinking that, hey, strap bombers are going to end this super, super fast. We're not going to be very far into this game at all, and everybody's just going to get sniped. But in reality, Navy is making up the difference. And here we have some T4 torpedo or T3 torpedo bombers. Don't you wish that there was a T4 torpedo bomber? I mean, really, come on. But thanks to a veterancy and a misplaced torpedo, that cruiser is going to survive. Notice the micro on this, moving the Solus around the north edge so that it can attack from an angle where it can drop all of its torps. If you attack from this side, it's just going to have all the torps drop on land and you're not going to kill that cruiser. But moving in from this angle, he is definitely going to drop that son of a gun. Unfortunately, cruiser production is in full swing and we have multiple cruisers coming down from both sides. And this is what I was saying about Navy overpowering air. You can have all the air control in the world, and if you have a bunch of cruisers in the water right off of your air base, you're going to be taking heavy damage no matter what you're building. Now, granted, Solus's do counter cruisers mass for mass because a Solus costs about two-thirds as much as a cruiser, and it kills it in one pass. So even if it dies, it's still a win. But uh, the more cruisers that you have, the less likely Solus's are to be able to overcome the entire navy. And the way that you counter those solaces is to build mobile shields. You need to throw out either hover shields for Aeon and Seraphim or the Bulwark for UEF Navy, of which there is absolutely none in this game because no one got UEF. Kind of unusual, actually. Typically, there's always UEF. UEF everywhere. I spy a little tack launcher. Have you been working, Mr. Tack? Possibly. We do have some carnage in some areas. I'm not sure. I have not actually seen it fire. Although that would be hilarious if that's what killed that ACU earlier and I didn't even notice. Solus is still trying to pick these guys off. But as narrow as the channels are here, it's kind of hard to land shots unless you're coming from exactly the right angle. And that is bad. That is what I was about to comment on. Patrolling your ASF over the top of cruisers. That would be a no-no. We've got a lot of hover moving out for Castigo. He's trying to maintain his position against this Navy. Thanks to the cruisers moving off to the left and the destroyers kind of getting displaced, it looks like the hover is actually going to have a fair bit of luck. All that artillery and the handful of tanks are going to be able to easily kill off those uh, frigates. And they're going to move on to the destroyer if... No. Alec is paying attention, so he's going to kite just out of reach and try to kill those things off, only passing back into reach. Okay, so that is a nice little bit of recovery by Castigo. Hopefully he will get out here, yep, start reclaiming ASAP, get that mask back in his pocket, and drop a naval factory ASAP. That is another thing that kind of tends to annoy me sometimes. That was a nice pickup on that potential drop. Um... One of my pet peeves is when we're on a Navy-based map, and yes, everybody knows I play a lot of Sentence, but I'm not specifically speaking to Sentence. Um, it is pretty much to any map that has a significant amount of water, such as this one. Um, Hover will always lose to Navy, especially, especially now that the beta patch is being played a bit more because the Hover is slower. So you're going to be able to kite with destroyers much more effectively, and even your frigates have a range advantage over hover, so unless you're versus someone who just absolutely is not paying attention, then you're going to be able 
you're not going to be able to overtake their frigates with your hover. So, yes, it is awesome when you can regain your footing in the water using hover. However, if you do not immediately throw down naval factories and start producing frigates and or destroyers as fast as you possibly can while pumping out as much build power as you can get your hands on, um, you're going to end up losing again anyway. You've got to reestablish your footing no matter how unsure that footing may be. And that is one of the biggest things that kind of throws me for a loop is when people successfully regain their footing in the water and then they don't do this, which is throw down your naval factory, start reclaiming, and use that reclaim to boost yourself into an effective navy. We finally have a good amount of ASF from the Northern team. Swiss Cow is doing his job and building up his ASF force. It does look like he has enough to intercept incoming uh, strat bombers, which is basically the entire purpose of ASF. So it is not as bad as it was looking air-wise for the North team. Pardon me, I keep yawning. Um, but with the air player producing Navy, there's never going to be as many ASF for the North team as there are on the South. Granted, we are picking up a double eco here for Swiss Cow, which is very, very nice. But it's going to take a little while to catch up with the established air build of Le Mudka Fox. I do love this cruiser clumping here. Just absolutely demolishing these restores that are flying overhead. In terms of brute DPS and lack of overkill, Aeon cruisers are the best anti-air in this game. Yes, Seraphim is stronger versus gunships because of its flak capabilities, but overall, Aeon cruisers are the best. They have high health, they have high DPS, extremely fast projectile speed, and do extremely well. And I said extremely twice in a row, and that is bad speaking skills. Shame on Brink. I love this restore push. We've got so many missing mass extractors here. Alig dropping to 88 mass per tick, by far the lowest income of anyone. Restores doing what restores do best, and that is shred ecos and build power. They're eliminating factories, eliminating mechs, eliminating power generators, and moving on to the next target before units can catch up. And hopefully these guys will be building SAMs and or mobile flak. That is the best option. And hey, there's a shiny new nuke. Literally just finished. And here come the restores. No! I'm gonna kill off that power generator, which will probably fry that nuke launcher in one hit. I do like what Modka Fox is doing on the south side. Power generator is just a split second too late to save that nuke. Thankfully, there will be a large amount of reclaim here, so we'll be able to get that rebuilt very quickly or convert it into something else thanks to the magic of reclaim. But for now, it is depressing because he has lost a vital tool. And now there is hover in the base. That is awesome. Brilliant! I had thought that the Navy was completely and totally lost on the right side for the Southern team, but look at this dropping a T3 Naval Factory as soon as he has the capability, pushing out a T3 sub to complement that hover, and he is going to make a complete and total comeback in large part thanks to this cloud of restores that has passed over this landmass like a freaking tsunami. I love it. On the left hand side we have a good use of T3 Navy. We have a aircraft carrier and aircraft carrier pushing forward. That is twice the mass cost for literally 10 times the health and about the same anti-air DPS. So if you can build aircraft carriers they're actually way more survivable versus Solaces than cruisers are. And then we have a torrent moving in. And as those of you who watched my last sentence cast know, I am particularly fond of torrents just because they're so freaking awesome. Look at the amount of missiles raining down on the heads of your enemies. It's just the best thing ever. These things are specifically designed 
to overwhelm tack defenses. If you get two or three Solaces off of shore, basically you can't build enough TMD in one tight location to stop those things. Well, that might be a slight exaggeration, but it's not far from the truth. As far as miles to the mass, I think these restorers have done about the best that you could ask of any air unit. They've all got lots of kills, at least one veterancy. They have demolished the eco of a lot of positions here. Finally, all of them are going to go down thanks to those cruisers, but the damage is done. Let's take a look here. We've got Modka Fox pulling 172 mass, which is actually kind of low, but he did lose some mass extractors. And the king of the hill is I Am Cupcakes with 215 mass per tick. Noticeably, the only person who did not get hit by restores. That would be why he is so high. Teague, not far behind, actually. Or he may be a little bit ahead. 233 to 235. Not sure what the dealio is there. And we got 179, 186, 186, and 78. And the dead guy. Cannot forget the dead guy. May he rest in peace. As and there is the magic of the torrent. Killed off a T3 power generator. Heavy damage to the air factories, which is going to consume build power and mass for the other player. And torrent is now homing in on this T2 mass extractor. And you can see some of the tacks are getting deflected by this TMD, but not enough. Some of them are getting through, and the more you stack up AM, Aeon TMD, the worse it is because they all trigger on the same tack. It is a brutal reality. All right. I almost thought that there was going to be a resurgent, resurgence of the Northside Navy but it is looking more and more doubtful as thing go, things go on. I keep stumbling over my own words here. Um, there's a lot of cruisers over here, which are kind of... Well, they were. They should be trying to eliminate the build power. So many Salems! So many Salems! That is mini carnage. There we go. Eliminating the build power. This is an annoyance. A huge annoyance. But it looks like there are going to be enough Salem's coming out to actually drive back both sides of this Navy, at least temporarily. Lots of Suicide Torps coming out, trying to lay some damage down on these destroyers so that they are a little bit easier to kill. Two Salem's going in against that is pure suicide, but at least it's going to force him to reconsider his position. These Salem's on the left going to be more than sufficient to push back this entire navy since it's mostly comprised of cruisers and flak. There are destroyers streaming down from the factory and hover incoming, but for the most part, there's nothing that can deal with those Salem's immediately at the front. Two T3 subs and about to be two battleships. The more T3 subs you have, the more you can clump them up and the more lethal they are. And as I was saying just a minute ago, I Am Cupcake survived the last round of Restorers taking zero hits, but it looks like there's another round of Restorers coming in and he has no anti-air except for these two Sams. Oh, nope. I'm sorry. I'm staring right at it and I'm not recognizing them. We have five, six, seven, eight, nine Sams. So lots of damage incoming for those Restorers should they choose to wander in there. Terrible decision! Don't do that! All that flak... My goodness, the damage on those. That is why flak is amazing. It hurts more than one gunship at a time. DPS actual may not be very high, but DPS applied is ginormo gargantuan for flak that has a group of gunships flying overhead. Looks like we're going to see the first battleship roll. Nope, there's one right there. Second battleship roll off the left-hand factories. I am Cupcakes doing his absolute level best to assert his dominance over this navy. But I think that Teague does have enough destroyers now that he will be able to hold back anything that Cupcakes can throw at him, at least in the near future. Looks like Teague is pulling 602 mass off of Reclaim 240 Actual. And then Modka Fox pulling right at 200 mass per tick with a little bit of Reclaim himself from this group of engineers that's out in the middle. 
frigates rolling into the back, trying to lay down some damage on this build power, succeeding in pushing it around a little bit, but there are just not enough frigates to actually do any significant damage. Let's run down the reclaim counter real quick. Magka Fox pulling in 22k reclaim total. And we've got 66 for Teague. Holy Kashmolis. 30 for Cupcakes. 48 for Swiss Cow. Castigo raking in 30 for himself. And we've got 2,500 for Leo. And 53,000 for Alec. Which is basically the only reason that Alec is still in the game due to the fact that he lost all of his eco at one point. Yeah, Reclaim can do awesome things if you ask it to. Many, many hover moving in. Not sure that those are going to be entirely effective versus those Salems, but it does look they, like they're making headway thanks to the fact that Teague is basically just not microwing. There he is. He's moving now. He needs to be moving. Otherwise, he's going to lose his entire fleet to a handful of hover tanks, which would be kind of embarrassing. Is that an ACU? Yes, it is. ACU winging its way over to the right, probably trying to get back in the protection of that base. He is taking a lot of heavy fire over here from these torrents, so I'm sure he is worried about his safety. There is a three-quarter built Czar with no build power on it. Why is Modka Fox? Probably because he got his power sniped out. He is probably hurting for power. Yeah, balancing right on the cusp of stalling. Thankfully, his team is maintaining his power storage. Looks like we got an Awasa going down. Things are about to get really interesting here. Castigo throwing down an Awasa. Looks like we've got the nuke rebuilt for Swiss Cow, who is now in control of three Ecos. Where is Alec? Alec is walking back, apparently no longer concerned with this game. I would bet money that he is about to have to leave. So he's just going to park his ACU in the most secure area and get out of there. Nice little stand with some T3 subs for Swiss Cow. He's got three to two. But not any battleships. Looks like he's going to go the full T3 sub route. Theoretically a good idea. But what that really means is that you don't have any way to stop T2 hover tanks. And those hover tanks are going to go right over the top of your helpless submarines. And park right in the middle of your build power. And destroy everything. Everything that you ever held dear. So not exactly the perfect plan of action once you think the whole thing through. Interesting note about the Cybern battleships. I cannot remember if I've said this before in a cast, but I know that I've said it in the faction tutorials, which you should totally go look at. Uh, actually, I think it was in the Navy tutorial in which I did all four factions at once. Um, Cybern battleship is the only battleship that is viable versus hover because each of its three guns fire independently, giving it an extremely high fire rate and low overkill in battleship terms, which means it can relatively effectively deal with hover in most instances. Very, very handy tool. It's the only faction where you can go 100% battleships without destroyer support as long as your opponent is not building subs because the battleships don't really have good torpedoes. They do have torpedoes, but they are terrible DPS. All right, thanks to the magic of torpedo bombers, there are now, there is now only one sub. There are now only two subs. Every time I correct myself, the other correction was yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> now it's just two battleships and a couple of T3 subs on this side and not much of anything at all up here. There are T2 gunships moving in, which are going to do a brilliant job versus the hover since there's no anti-air. They're going to move on to the battleships, though. The hover is going to stay. I definitely would not have made that decision. Looks like those things are going to get knocked out very easily by the supplemental ASF detect. coming out from Teague. I say supplemental, but he actually has a large number. Three players now with T3 air. Here comes the nuke. Question is, is there loaded nuke defense? There is not. Look at the engineers scatter. Run. Run for the hills. Don't stop. And the nuke flies on. I do believe this is going to be a terrible occurrence for the Southern team. This game is completely back and forth, back and forth. 
I keep thinking that it's going to be a steamroll by one side and then a steamroll by the other side. And it just keeps coming back over and over again. There's the nuke directly in the middle, right where it should be. We got two T3 power generators, a whole lot of air factories, and some miscellaneous buildings and scraps going up in nuclear fire. Even lost a T3 mass extractor. That was a tough hit. Thankfully, though, Modka Fox saved 100% of his build power and he's already got that strat defense built and loading so hopefully he will be able to get it loaded before the next nuke strikes I kinda doubt it unless he dedicates an absurd amount of build power to it but yeah the problem is that before he took a nuke to the face Modka Fox built enough for stores and ASF to nearly single-handedly win that ASF fight, it looks like we still have reserves on the south side too. So basically that evened up the air game. That didn't even win the air game. Granted Strategic it was a glorious detected. nuke, but oh my word. Point blank battle sh nuke. I did not see that coming. Tit for tat, eye for an eye. That is bad news. Swiss Cow gets taken out, and that means... Oh, and Alec. That's going to be two bases, three bases eliminated at once, leaving only I Am Cupcakes to fight by his lonely little self. And here comes the Awasa to end all T4 bombers. I predict a bomb right there to eliminate all of this build power in one shot. Look at this. 14 kills. Two... 93 kills and three veterancy. Bam! If he ground fires there again, he can actually kill the ACU. Here comes another brilliant bomb, taking out all of the flak in one shot, finishing out the fourth veterancy, and heavily damaging all of that T3 Navy. That is GG. No more shall the Northern team fight. <clears throat> That is the end of the Navy and one more bomb and Cupcakes is out of here. Well, that was an interesting game to say the least. I do apologize for the beginning of that. I was a little out of it being slightly sleep deprived. But the longer that game went in, the more vicious it became. That turned out to be an epic one. Well done to all players involved and kudos for never giving up never gonna give you up all right it's enough for rolling um yeah basically we can just watch an awasa decimate large swaths of the territory and shrug off sam's because hey i have 78,000 health and max veterancy for massive healing capabilities all you need is that one bomb right there. You gotta know the ACU's there. Just ground fire it. Maybe he wants to eliminate everything. I bet you've never seen an Owasa Twitch. <laughs> nice. And there's the ACU nuke. Two torpedo bombers. Modka Fox is having none of that. Oh, I'm just gonna lollygag around and not really do anything. And it looks like that Czar belonged to Leo, actually. Cool beans. All right, that's the end of that replay. All four players alive on the southern side, despite living out a harrowing Navy loss. Kudos to Modka Fox for maintaining that air control and demolishing the entire right side with those restorers. I think that was a large portion of the deci deciding factor in this game. I don't think there was a single swing point that won the game up to that battleship nuke. It was going both ways, back and forth, over and over, right up till that nuke. And I think that is what did it in, but that restorer push definitely played a huge part in the comeback on the right side. Again, kudos to Castigo for getting back in the Navy and ramping up to T3 ASAP. All right, I hope you guys learned something from that. Should be a lot of play that you can emulate. Hopefully you'll pick up this map and give it a couple of plays. It is a good one. I guarantee you, you will have fun on this one. 
um, after you get the hang of how the different slots work. It plays a little differently than a lot of maps, but it is well worth learning and very, very fun. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up there. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Once again, please shoot me any replays that you have. Use the Twitter, Facebook, and private messaging system. All the links for that are in the description. And I will see you guys on Thursday for the normally scheduled cast. Adios.